In this video, I will be giving a very basic overview of the ANSYS Granta Selector, followed by a short demo displaying the value that the ANSYS Granta Selector brings to the table. The ANSYS Granta Selector is composed of many different material databases. These databases include data sheets for all types of materials, such as metals, polymers, and composites. It also contains data sheets for materials commonly used in medical, aerospace, and additive manufacturing applications. These databases include design data, such as the ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code and MMPDS. These databases also include supplier data sheets, which allow you to find exact material properties for a certain supplier of the material in question. In addition to data sheets, the ANSYS Granta Selector also includes standards and specifications for many materials. ANSYS Granta compiles all of this data into its material universe. The material universe contains complete data sheets for over 4,000 materials. The material universe provides complete and comparable data for all of the main classes of commercially available engineering materials. Each data sheet represents the performance of the generic material type, with links to data sheets for individual grades and designations in the specialist data modules. It is particularly useful for early stage screening and cross-class material comparison. To interrogate this data, we include a range of visualization, screening, comparison, and reporting tools to help you identify optimal materials and compare them against a baseline material. You can then create material cards ready for FEA simulation, as well as reports that document the entire material selection process. Now that we've gone over the basics of the ANSYS Granta Selector, I'll show you an example of how the Granta Selector can be used to solve a real-world problem. In this example, we have a rocker arm made from polyamide 66, or PA66. However, a global shortage is currently driving up the price of that material by more than 40%. So, we need to use the Granta Selector to find a suitable, cost-effective alternative. To the left, you can see the rocker arm with the loading conditions being applied to it. To ensure that the new material works for our design, we want to keep our total deformation at or below the current maximum deformation we are seeing of 0.058 inches. And we also want to keep the factor of safety at or above the current value of 1.65. In order to do this, we need to find a material with a Young's modulus and a yield strength higher than that of PA66. Finally, we want to use the same manufacturing process for the rocker arm which is an injection molding process. I will now show you how to use the Granta Selector to find a material that fits this description. Now that I have my problem defined, I'm going to come into the Granta Selector to find my suitable replacement material. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the datasheet for PA66. I'm going to select this molding PA66 because we are using an injection molding process. When I double click on that material, its complete data sheet appears. I'm going to set this material as my reference material. So anytime I view a new material, it automatically compares the material properties to this PA66. Now that I've set my reference material, I'm going to start searching for materials that might fit my requirements. I'm going to come to this chart select tool, and I'm going to set the database that I want to search from. I know I want to stick with the polymer, so I'm going to select in the, under the Material Universe tab the All Polymers. And you'll see now that I've selected that, there are 902 polymers in the Material Universe database that I can search from. I want to be able to visualize these materials better, so I'm going to create a chart to display the material properties that I'm interested in. I'm going to set my Y axis to be my Young's Modulus. And I'm going to set my x-axis to be price. The resulting chart compares Young's modulus and price per unit volume of all 902 polymers contained within the material universe. I want to filter these materials in order to find suitable replacements for my particular application. To do this, I'm going to first eliminate all of these polymers that cannot be used in an injection molding process. To do this, I'm going to create a limit, and under Processing Properties, I'm going to set Polymer Injection Molding to Excellent. I'm going to apply this limit, and then go back to my tree. And you will see, 
Everything that is grayed out is not be able to be used in an injection molding process. And we have gone from 902 possible materials to 190. I'm going to remove all of those failed materials using this button and then resize my graph. Now that I've removed the failed materials from our graph, we need to identify a material that has a higher Young's modulus but lower price than our reference material. If I want to view the reference material, the PA66, I can do so in the graph here. Now if we want a material that has a higher Young's modulus and lower price than this reference material, it would lie above and to the left of this reference material. In order to filter these results, I'm going to create another limit. When I'm creating this limit, I'm going to follow the same process that I used for last limit. First, I'm going to go to the price branch, and I'm going to set my maximum price to be the lower end of my reference range. Next, I'm going to go to the mechanical properties, and I'm going to set my minimum Young's modulus equal to the upper end of my reference range. I'm also going to do the same for yield strength. I'm going to apply this limit and then go back to my graph. You'll see that the remaining materials have been filtered. There are now only 25 polymers that meet both of the limits that we specified. I'm going to choose this PPC right here, and if I want to compare it to my reference material, the PA66, I can hit comparison. This allows me to compare the material properties for the PA66 and the PPC side by side to allow me to ensure I'm choosing the right material for this application. After I review these material properties and determine that PPC will work for me, if I want to export this material into an FEA software, I can right click on the material and hit export to and then pick the software that I'm interested in. I have gone ahead and exported the material data and run the simulation, and we'll take a look at the results now to verify that this material works for our application. The results for the simulation with PPC used as the material instead of PA66 are shown here. As you can see, there is less deformation and a higher factor of safety than with PA66. This table summarizes the differences between the two materials. From these results, we can determine that PPC is a suitable replacement for PA66. This concludes this video covering the Granta selector. Thank you for watching.